Hi everybody, my name's Jen, also known as the Chronic Health Advocate, coming to you from the patient, parent, and professional perspective. Today I'm going to talk about the Purdue Pegboard Test, um, something you might not be familiar with, and if you are, I'd love to get your feedback. Before we start, I like to do a little um, fun fact. It's just a way for you to get to know me. Um, I'm actually wearing my Oscar shirt today. I'm surprised it hasn't gone missing. Um, my daughters probably didn't know I had it. It's been hiding in my closet. Um, now that they fit into my clothes, I'm sure I won't have it for very long. So my fun fact is that I have this really super comfy pair of Oscar pajamas that I love. They have little Oscars all over them. I should have had it ready to show you. And when I come home, I love to get in my comfy clothes right away. So that's usually what I go to. Um, so yes, the uh, Purdue pegboard test is what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and from the patient perspective, um, it'll be coming. So I recently had what's called a functional scale, uh, functional scan analysis. It was a short one. It was just a few hours, not a full two day or a longer one, like often happens. And as part of that test, they had me do this fine motor um, test with this pegboard. And I was really confused um, why they were getting me to do this test, but. Um, just to recap, you sit at a table with your arms out and there's a, uh, a pegboard with little notches down it, kind of looks like a cribbage board, it has little pegs and they get you to do a series of trials with putting these pegs into the holes. So I started with my dominant hand, my right hand, um, which I believe is always started with. If you read online, it does talk about the thing, that's my phone. Uh, it talks about the procedure for how to run the test through. So ran through the right hand, ran through the left hand. Um, there was also, I think it was three times each. Then they get you to start assembling these, there's little pieces that you have to put together and you're kind of assembling them and you do them. Ding, that's my phone again. Um, assemble them on the, on the board and uh, the person times you. And so whatever they do with that data, I had no idea. So I had felt like I had done a really good job. I was doing really well with my fine motor and getting them in the holes. I was concentrating, um, but I, I felt I was doing uh, really, really well. So I got the report back in the mail yesterday. And just to tell you what the, this part surprised me. So the Purdue pegboard test, and if you look online, it seems, it seems to be like a standard line that's on Wikipedia or wherever you look. It says it's a neuropsychological test of manual dexterity and bimanual coordination. The test involves two different abilities, gross movement of arms, hands, and fingers, and fine motor, dexter or fine motor extremity, also called fingerprint dexterity. So according to the results, um, I was very consistent. I scored almost the same each trial through um, for each of the things they got me to do. However, I scored poor, which I I still it's I'm still baffled by. Um, so I went online, of course, as we all do, to kind of research to see what the significance of that was. Um, I know that obviously I have Ehlers Danlos, so that affects my joints, and I have hypermobility, and it does affect my hands. I do have sometimes a finger splint that I'll wear on this finger um, because my fingers do go so far back so it, it can help if I'm writing or peeling potatoes or something. But I was still very surprised that I scored so poorly on this. Um, however, my research on the internet um, didn't give me very much information and I still don't, re I don't really know the relevance of um, what the test has shown. So I would love to know if anyone else has information um, or can find something good. I can find information on how to run the test through um, and just this, basically this, what I read you, but nothing else. So maybe even a, 
an OT or I think it was a kinesiologist that ran that part of the test would know and could comment on this. Um, so yeah, so I was just putting that out there. I would love to hear from anyone if they have experience with this. You can post a comment. And of course, as usual, be sure to subscribe um, for any upcoming videos. Thanks.